Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to try and do something that I've never actually done before and that is bypassing Apple security by means of a little chip here. Let's get started. The machine in question here is a early 2015 Retina MacBook Pro 13 inch. It's seen some better days but it's always been a very trusty machine. This is an i5 model, the 2.7 GHz dual core Broadwell i5, 8 GB of RAM, and it has a 256 GB SSD, which we'll see in a minute. There's one problem, and it has always had this problem when I bought it. I bought this one reasonably cheap. It had a, the uh, coating peeling off, that's why it's very reflective right now. And the main issue it's always had was a firmware password. And at the moment it's not cooperating, so we'll just shut it down again and hold the option key. And uh, I've contacted the previous owner of this machine. He didn't know the password. He couldn't tell me anything about it. And uh, so sadly we're stuck. And the issue is I really want to reinstall this machine. It's now running macOS Big Sur, which is running okay, but I really want to downgrade it to Catalina. <laughs> Will perform a lot better. You can make out the uh, lock down there. So yeah, that's very annoying because you can't even do a reinstall when there's a firmware password on there. If your operating system ever stops working, you can throw it in the bin because there is no original receipt to this machine. When I bought it secondhand, the previous owner didn't have it either anymore. There is no way to prove your ownership of the machine. And therefore, uh, Apple will not help you to get the firmware password removed. Now, I found a third party that's selling hardware just for this cause on their website. It's called MacUnlocks.com. They're situated in the UK. And if you're not very handy or very skilled with soldering, like I am, this is a solder-free solution. It plugs into a little opening on the logic board. And in theory, once you've uh, booted the Mac up again after installing this, the EFI password should be cleared. To my knowledge, this will also clear the serial number on the machine, but we'll see how that goes. That wouldn't be that terrible of a deal breaker because this machine is mainly used for browsing the web and YouTube and all that stuff. It doesn't really need to do uh, iMessage and FaceTime if that's going to be uh, no longer serviceable after this. I'm not exactly sure, there's not a lot of documentation on their website on how to uh, go about this and what the uh, possible complications might be. So uh, we'll just dive straight in and uh, see how this goes. So I've turned the machine off, very important. Now we're going to take out all of the little uh, screws here. I've got the correct bit here on my iFixit screwdriver and we should be good to go. All right, the screws are out. You should be able to pry off the cover. Oh, I forgot one. That happens sometimes. One of the downsides of doing these things on camera and behind from behind the camera, sometimes you miss some little details. It's held in very well. There we go. Just do it gently. Could use a good cleaning. I'll, uh, I'm going to clean it up as soon as uh, we verify that this fix is actually working. Because there's not much point in giving this machine a lot of TLC when it has a resale value of exactly zero. Right, let's move the camera over a bit. And point it down. So you can see everything that's going on. So you can definitely tell it's a bit dirty. Wi-Fi card is over here. Cooling fan is reasonably clean. Heatsink is pretty clean overall. SSD is over here, which is still replaceable on these models. So that's very nice. Okay. So I guess now, 
it is time to get the magical chip out. And uh, find a place to plug in. If it wants to come out, there we go. Here's what it looks like, very small. And uh, I'm going to take a look around the board and see where this uh, fits in. Well, I'm reasonably blind. <laughs> it's right there. I'm not sure if this has a certain orientation in which it needs to go on. Just studying the card here. I don't know if you can make this out. We'll have to see if we can get it to focus here. EFI card, 2015 to 2018. So that's the years this will work with. I don't see any markings on how it's intended to go on, so I guess we'll just try. There we go. Popped on nicely. We'll put on the back cover again to make sure we don't short anything. All right. Let's lower it down a bit and see if we get the, uh, very crunchy today, see if we get the lock still. No bong at all. Interesting. Time to look into that. Oh, there he goes. I flipped it around the other way. And now we can pick a network. All right. I'm going to connect it to our Wi-Fi here real quick. Uh, let's see here. That's better. This is already a good sign. The particular chip that I chose is actually fully destructive to your SSD, so it will actually wipe it. But that's fine. And it's starting internet recovery. Now this machine is from, I think it was October or September of 2015. So it's either the very first build of El Capitan that it's going to boot up to, or it's going to be Yosemite. Both of which are fine. I think I have a USB stick somewhere that I made with Catalina already, which I'll probably just boot. If I could find it. Is I'm not fully sure what it is. Now that we have a uh, fiber optic connection for our internet, at least entering uh, internet recovery only takes a few minutes, so that's good. Okay. It's turned off now. We'll boot it up again. We'll hold option. Right, so this was not the correct USB stick, all right. I know that I have one that has Catalina on it. Would have sworn it was that one. At least it's the same model, I know that's for sure. I have two of these uh, SanDisk Ultras and they're absolutely amazing USB sticks for the money. Well, if I can't actually find it, then that's fine too, but I guess I'll just and something else. Uh, I'm gonna look for that flash drive real quick. I'll be right back. Well, it uh, looked good at first, but now we're at a pin number screen and I can't actually put anything in there. So 
So that's great. Grab a USB keyboard. See if that helps. Doesn't seem to respond to it at all. Well, that's annoying. By the way, I just booted back into. Uh, oh wow! Suddenly it starts working. I can type it on my numpad on my regular keyboard. It's also weird that's in French. Yeah, absolutely no chance. Huh, so that's interesting. Clear one problem and you got the next one. Yeah, it's been deactivated. We can try again in a minute. Right, so there's no way in hell we can use that feature. I've also been unable to find my Catalina install USB, so I'll have to recreate it. Hopefully, we can get into that installer. And if we can't, then this machine is now officially a paperweight. <laughs> I really wish I hadn't bought this machine now. It's been over a year and a half, and there's absolutely no way that we'll ever get this sorted out. If we can't get beyond that. Oh well, I guess we'll recreate and install USB, and if that goes well, we'll be back in a few seconds. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have some results, which is very good. So, uh, that PIN number, it went away as soon as I created a new install medium and uh, reset to PRAM. Now I booted back into an El Capitan installer and it didn't ask for a PIN number again. So it would appear that we can now do a clean install. Uh, VRAM obviously also clears the connection to the internet, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to connect this to the internet and all that, but well, I guess we'll have to find out. This is quite a roller coaster, isn't it? Anyways, let's call this Macintosh HD. This is a very old installer. This is El Capitan. This is what... Uh, this machine likely shipped with, either that or a very late version of the Yosemite. When I bought my first 2015 MacBook Pro, six years ago almost, uh, that still had Yosemite. So that was a machine that made in, I think, May or June of 2015. Had that for a good while, really enjoyed that machine. And in hindsight, I kind of regret selling it, especially now that I have to deal with this one that way is in way worse condition overall. And, there's all these weird issues and so yeah. We'll just go for El Capitan, we'll upgrade to Catalina later. Or Mojave, I haven't decided yet. One of the two. We're gonna skip Big Sur for now, maybe we'll try it at some point later. But uh for now we're gonna be fine with El Capitan. Assuming it's going to actually install and allow us to uh use the Mac again the way it was intended. Again, um, this is a destructive way of uh, resetting the EFI password. In the end, if, the, if you're doing this for data recovery purposes, this is not the way to do it. The only real way is to take it to a, uh, uh, to a company that is specialized in data recovery and hope that you didn't have FileVault enabled or that the person that owned it back previously didn't have FileVault enabled. You should be able to get your data back that way. In my case, I just want to brute force my way back into the Mac so I can actually do simple things like install an operating system. I might even try installing some different operating system at some point, just to fool around with it a little bit. But for now, I'm just happy that it's actually installing Al Capitan. I didn't get stuck in that annoying French pin code screen that probably wasn't going to be able to be fixed in any way. It didn't list any iCloud IDs or anything like that, so who knows what that was. I just hope it's going to stay away. That way I'll be a, a very happy camper for sure. If you want to get uh, this little piece of hardware as well, I'll put a link down in the description where you can buy it. At the moment it's a sale, and that's uh, in mid 
February of 2021. And it was, uh, I think, 40% off or something. It was 50 pounds, 50 British pounds. It's not that cheap, but it's a very easy solution. So I guess ease also uh, adds some value there. Anyways, enough rambling. I'm going to install El Capitan. I'll get back to you once we're on the desktop to see if everything is working okay. And if we get uh, all, signs on, uh, all signs green and all signs okay, then uh, I'll be very happy indeed, and we can uh, close this video off. All right, result. Didn't end up installing El Capitan, that install failed, so I made another USB bootable stick with macOS Mojave, then 14.6. Thick enough just keeping this on there. Might have created the Catalina, but no big sir for this guy, that's for sure. We'll probably replace it with like an M1 MacBook Air at some point. But uh, yeah, everything appears to be in order. So uh, that's very nice. Serial number didn't change, so that's good. So uh, that's not an issue then. It's only a destructive thing for your data. But uh, other than that, jobs are good. Log into iCloud and all that, it's working fine. Didn't get that weird uh, pin number anymore from anywhere, so that's good. Perhaps the uh, internet recovery will never work again because of that limitation, but I don't really use that anyway. Plenty of Macs around the house to uh, create a bootable USB installer, so that's fine. But uh, one thing to note, if you take out this module again, it will just revert back to uh, the way it was. It'll have the uh, password up again for the EFI, so you need to keep it in there. You can take it out if you want to, but you know, you just get stuck at that screen again, and you might just lose this little thing anyway. So uh, yeah, jobs are good. It's taken a while. It's been a roller coaster of a ride, that's for sure. But uh, everything turned out great. Hope you enjoyed this video and this experiment. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.